Hear that? Believe it or not, summer is just around the corner. Luckily, Armor All, America's most trusted auto appearance brand, has what your car needs to get that perfect summer shine. Plus, now through May 31st, we'll give you $5 for every $20 you spend on Armor All products. That means car wash pods, protectant, tire shine, you name it. Find out how to get your $5 rebate at ArmorAll.com. Armor All, less work, more clean. Terms apply. Are you enjoying the Single Tracks podcast? Well, we could use your support. The small but dedicated Single Tracks team works hard to share the mountain bike information that inspires epic adventures through this podcast, our worldwide database of trail maps and photos, and daily news and reviews on the website. So consider becoming a monthly, annual, or lifetime pro supporter and enjoy ad-free browsing on the website, free single track stickers in the mail, and discounts on merch for as little as $3 per month. Go to singletracks.com slash support to sign up and to find out other ways you can help support our mission. That's singletracks.com slash support. Thank you and happy trails. Hey everybody, welcome to the Single Tracks podcast. My name is Jeff, and today my guest is Fabio Whitmer. Fabio is an Austrian trials rider and mountain biker with almost 6 million YouTube followers, and he's closing in on a billion views. He's known for starring in videos like Whitmer's Law, Fabiolus Escape 1 and 2, and most recently, Home Office. In addition to trials riding, Fabio is also a winning downhill and free ride mountain biker. Thanks for joining us, Fabio. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's awesome. Yes. So you're currently recovering from a broken foot following a dirt bike crash, I believe, in November. How are you feeling? Yeah, it's uh, going all right. Um, yeah, as you just said, I had a quite a big um, dirt bike crash when I was riding my motocross bike. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I just like had a very unlucky crash and I uh, just somehow touched the front brake on my motorbike and uh, it instantly stopped and went dead sailor pretty much and then I had to go off and uh, hit my foot pretty hard uh, and smash it to the ground so um, yeah first I wasn't really sure like what's wrong but then uh, yeah um, I went to the hospital and they saw that it's uh, actually broken in a couple of pieces um, so I had to get fixed, had to get a surgery, and now I'm uh, five weeks in since the surgery and trying to get back on my bike as soon as possible. But it just uh, takes like quite some time, um, as it's not a very you know um, easy so, um, easy um, injury. So um, yeah, I just have to wait a lot and um, doing a lot of physio and rehab stuff all the time, but. Yeah, it's part of it. Yeah, I guess so. I imagine you've had a number of injuries over the years. Do you have tips or tricks for recovering from injury? And like, how do you fill your time when you're off the bike? I bet you get you get kind of anxious to get back out there. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I, I think I was quite lucky in the past um, with uh, my crashes and with my injuries. Um, I mean, I had tons of hard crashes in the past, but. I was I was pretty lucky to walk away from most of them without having any big injuries. Mm. So um, the biggest one was a uh, broken collarbone, and then this injury now. So um, that wasn't wasn't too bad for my crash, I would say. And uh, so therefore, I'm not you know really you know used to being injured. And yeah. um, I'm also you know when I when I broke my collarbone last time, I definitely had a lot to do. As I as I was just about to release a video, so I was just uh, trying to spend my time my time with uh, editing and stuff like that. But now, um, yeah, it can be quite hard to to uh, just like handle an injury because it just like you know it just sucks because all you want to do is ride your bikes pretty much, and uh, now you can't and uh, just like takes so much time. And when you think of it, like how m- more time you have to and how much energy you have to put into the injury um, to get back on the bike. Just uh, really, yeah, it's really hard for your mind. And um, sometimes it can be quite hard to like properly stay positive in some situations. But um, I think uh, like most of the athletes or at least myself, and I think uh, a lot of others, we're, you know, we're trying our best and we're just like thinking about the good things of biking. And when you've got a goal 
even when you're injured, then uh, you can. I think you can be back on on the bike or on uh, what whatever you have um, like pretty soon. And um, it's just like you know, sometimes can be like a good process to learn stuff, and uh, which can also give you opportunities as well, not just uh, not just um, yeah, bad things. So. Yeah. I mean, I imagine it, it kind of messes with your plans too, your projects that you're working on or hoping to work on coming up. How, what does that do for your confidence, if anything at all? I mean, after an injury, are you, are you nervous about getting back into that situation? Like, are you gonna, you gonna be riding motorcycles, uh, much after this? Yeah, it definitely messes with the plan set for sure. Um, I mean, I quite some plans, um, for the next few weeks and months uh, but uh you know things like this can can happen all the time and i think you just have to you know take them and uh just uh yeah take the best out of it but um yeah i'm not quite sure how it affects my confidence to be honest also i mean i know what i did wrong and i think that's like one of the most important things when it comes to an injury like know what you did wrong and why it happened and if you if you um yeah, I can learn from that. You can probably avoid that in the in the future and learn out of that. And um, but uh, yeah, it's definitely gonna be a strange feeling being on a motorcycle uh, again. But I think I'm yeah, I definitely want to ride again. And I don't think this uh, injury will like will uh, help me off of uh, you know riding my riding my motorbike. I guess. Yeah, is that is is moto sort of a hobby for you, or is that something that you use to get better on your mountain bike? I think it's definitely both. I mean, I started motocross racing when I was six years young, and uh, my, yeah, my father he was super interested in motocross racing and super into it, and uh, then uh, he bought me and my brother a motocross bike, and since that we were like riding all the time on a motocross motocross bike and we were also competing in races stuff like that mm-hmm. for almost 10 years so my background is definitely motocross racing and hmm. i don't know i just like think it's one of the coolest sports you can do and it's just so much fun and um it's also very close to biking which is super cool and i think like having um motocross as an extra training thing for your biking uh discipline is definitely really cool and definitely helpful Mm, yeah well yeah i was going to ask you about how you sort of got started as a kid riding and it sounds like it was very early on Uh, when did you sort of realize that you were more talented or maybe just more passionate than other kids your age at riding bikes or or riding motorcycles yeah i think the problem back in the days was it me and my brother we were just allowed to ride motorbikes on the weekends and you know not on every weekend just because we didn't have the opportunity to go out of the house and uh race uh, our bikes um because there were were no tracks around us the closest track was to us away mm-hmm. um from where uh, from where i grew up so it was super hard to actually ride motocross um but it was super fun and i think for you know during the week, I was trying to find something similar to motocross. And, uh, I think that's where my passion and love for, um, for uh, biking came up. And, um, yeah, I just love to ride bikes all the time during the week. And on the weekends, we were racing motocross. So it gave me kind of like a, a, a good mixture of both. And, um, we were just building jumps in the woods with my friends and I always uh, loved being on the on the bike, mm-hmm. but I never really liked to pedal up somewhere <laughs> or to, to go up somewhere. And uh, yeah, focus was all about, you know, jumps and doing whips and building, yeah, stuff in the woods um, with my friends. Yeah. So that was uh, the best time ever. And um, then at the age of, uh, I think it was 14 or 15, uh, I saw the video from Danny, from Danny McCaskill. Since that day when I saw that video, like my mind was blown away from his riding and I knew I need to get a bike like he had. And uh, then then I got one. And since that day, since I had that bike and since I got it, I was so obsessed with trials biking that I just like couldn't stop. I was riding every single day for at least like three or four hours after school um, and trying our tricks that Danny did back in the days. And I was just obsessed with it. And the, the cool thing about 
fire spiking on that, like back in the days was, that I was able to go out of the house and do something without, you know, needing to go somewhere, without uh, like doing anything. I just had the bike and uh, I was able to go out and ride pretty much all day long after school. And uh, that's what I did. And that's when my passion for biking started to become more intense than ever, I would say. And um, yeah, I also loved making videos. Um, there was another passion, which I loved. I think also because, you know, Danny really inspired me with his videos. And I don't know, I just felt like whenever I'm filming something, I'm also learning something because like, I'm able to look at things that I'm doing and look at the things I'm doing wrong and then learn out of them it was super help was super helpful for me and um definitely yeah helped me a lot in my in my process yeah that's interesting because I guess a lot of people think about making videos and they think you know about the people who are going to watch it but you know you found that you can use those videos yourself to improve and kind of critique yourself and learn from it and try new things and also love your background. I mean, it's just so diverse in terms of like urban stuff and, you know, writing, getting creative with whatever you have around and also writing trails and, and doing moto riding, which is, you know, a lot more speed involved. And yeah, that really comes through in all the videos that you've done, which is, is pretty awesome to see. Yeah, definitely. And, um, I mean, I think when it comes to, um, you know, trying to use what you have. And uh, that's well, my style of writing is also, you know, thinking about things which you see every single day and then using them as your playground. Uh, and that probably comes from, uh, from you know, growing up in a very small village. I mean, the village where I grew up, well, there, there are just 100 people who live there. So there's not much to do. And we weren't able, you know, to properly go somewhere else by our own, you know, where we can do more stuff. So um, we... Or I had to deal with the things we had in 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 our village, and that was uh, pretty much a wall <laughs> and the rail. And uh, I just like I was riding that rail every single day for yeah for, for hours. And um, this definitely teached me a lot on how to see things in a different way and how to you know take one thing and then not just seeing the easy way to go over it or. Um, to ride on it but then also you know the more creative way and how to to use you know something simple like a like a rail in all kind of different ways and um i think that's yeah that's something which really helped me in the past yeah and that's such such a great story too to hear about your inspiration you know seeing danny mccaskill uh in his videos and then how long was it before before you actually were riding with Danny after seeing that? I mean, how many years was it before you sort of, you know, got to, to that level? Oh, that's a really good question. Uh, I think it must have been probably around like three to four years. Wow. Uh, I can remember Danny, Danny doing a workshop in Munich. He was doing a workshop and uh, he was on the internet um, saying that they are looking for 15 riders um, who are able to ride with him. And those riders who want to ride with him, they have to film a video, a clip, and um, uh, put it online and, and show it to them. And they're going to pick the 15 best riders. So um, I can definitely can totally remember that day when I was uh, you know, filming that video and trying my best to make it as good as possible. No pressure. Uh, so that was, yeah. And then I was lucky enough to be... Uh, that I was one of the 15 uh, chosen people. Mm -hmm. And then I went there and, uh, yeah, the first day or the first time when I saw Danny, I was like so nervous because he was just the, you know, the biggest inspiration ever. And he was, you know, the reason why I started riding trials and why I got into the biking thing more. When it comes to, when the day comes where you meet the biggest role model of your life, it's super special. And, um, like riding together with him was even was even better so um that was really cool and then um after this workshop which was uh i think two days um long um after this workshop i think yeah we went to it was called the Dresla camp in czech republic that's like a big trials bike festival more or less and um i went there uh with another friend of mine 
and uh, Danny was also there. And then the sponsor from Danny Inspired Bikes, Bicycles back in the days, they were also, you know, supporting me in a way and uh, giving me a frame and stuff like that. And they asked me if I want to be part of a little video shoot in the Czech Republic uh, while we we're there. So um, that was the first time I was, I was hanging out with Danny. And uh, yeah, I just like couldn't really talk to him because I was, you know, super nervous, young, and uh, it was really hard to find proper words talking with him. So that was really exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, and now, yeah, I'm sure that it's the same with you. I mean, you inspire writers in the same way, and I'm sure you get a lot of those types of interactions with younger writers who are, yeah, super stoked to meet you or to ride with you. So really cool to see that come full circle. So one of the recent videos that you did was Home Office. And again, this just shows your creativity and your ability to find interesting things to do with your bike, you know, no matter where you are. And in this case, it was at your house during the pandemic. A lot of people are, you know, kind of stuck at home and you found a really fun way to make a video out of it. And I've probably watched that video, I don't know, 20 times already. And it's, it's just awesome. Like some of that stuff, it's insane uh, how you're able to do that. Are there any tricks uh, that you really wanted to include in home office, uh, but you weren't able to complete? Like, I'm curious to know how you know when it's time to move on from a trick. Like, it's just not happening. Does that, does that happen to you? Um, I can, it can definitely happen, but I think like most of the time I can really judge, um, uh, my abilities and I kind of like know what I could do. And, you know, most of the tricks like home office was super, it was super funny because I had those like couple of crazy ideas and, uh, the, the things I did in the, in the video. And I, I mean, like, honestly, I wasn't sure if any of those tricks will ever work or not, or if it's just like in my mind that it can work. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but when, it, but like, theoretically, I thought, well, yeah, this, this might work. And if, if I just like try those things over and over again, there has to be the, the try when it works. And, um, <laughs> yeah, it should be. And that was, uh, home office all about just like trying, you know, those tricks over and over again. And, not giving up pretty much you know there were tricks like the basketball trick where i hit the basketball made my rear wheel and it went into into the basket so um, that was that was one where i was sure well i like i don't think it's gonna work <laughs> but then you know i had a couple of tries and i didn't really hit my hit my uh rear wheel uh on the ball and i was like yeah well this this might be tricky but then there was a try where i hit it actually where i hit the ball with my rear wheel and it was like yeah well if i give this enough tries then like maybe there will be but well, there, there will be a try when it works and uh as we had as we had lockdown we were you know we didn't really have any time pressure and i mean we were at home so we were pretty much just like messing around and uh, doing things where we weren't sure if they're going to work. But then in the end, like honestly, like all of them somehow worked out. I mean, the basketball tricks, trick, I think took, you know, five or 600 tries until we got it. But um, it's, yeah, it's quite funny that everything worked out, uh, which I didn't think in the beginning. But um, yeah, with enough tries, you can do quite a lot. And also, you know, those tricks, they weren't, you know, like super, super technical tricks, uh, writing wise, I would say it was more like, you know, some funny things, uh, some fun things, which you have to try over and over again. And you, and it's, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be luck if it's gonna happen and if it's gonna work. We must have to have a lot of patience to do that, to, to be able to try it over and over again. I mean, how many times, uh, did like the, the dart trick take for you? Yeah, there, there was another one. Like we were, like we were actually playing dart um, a day before we had the idea, or like at the same day when we had the idea, and the next day we tried to film it. And we were playing dart, and uh, my friend Hannes was uh, like, uh, he he um, said to me, "Well, this would be amazing if you would like be able to shoot a dart pin with your bike." And I was like, "Yeah, well, there's no way how to do it." But then we were like, "Yeah, well." 
maybe there could be a way um, that it might work. And uh, we're just bringing the bike, and I was just like trying to hit it with my handlebar, and somehow we saw that it's going into that direction, but it was like far away from you know working. So we said, well, if we're gonna give this enough tries, we might it might work. <laughs> and then the next day we were trying to do it. And we were not able to do it. And um, it was just also super tiring. And uh, then, uh, like, the next day, we uh, we tried it again. And, like, in overall, I think I got, like, six punch- punctures or seven. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was just, like, a pain in the ass trying that trick and knowing, well, uh, I might get another puncture now and have to repair it. Yeah. So that so that wasn't ideal, but then I think also after four or five hundred tries, it it worked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, geez, four or five hundred times, that's crazy. Well, do you consider yourself a perfectionist? Do you get really angry, or or what happens when you can't land a trick and you're you're just you're having a hard time with it? I think I'm definitely a perfectionist. Yeah, uh, when it comes to that, and uh, you know. I think my people who are working with me, you know, it, it might be hard sometimes for them. Yeah. Because I'm just like, you know, whenever something is like good and really good, I'm like, yeah, but I think we can do better. <laughs> and I think we can have another try and maybe film it from that angle or, or do it even better. And it's, um, yeah, it might be, it might be sometimes really difficult for, for me, but I also enjoy, you know, trying to make especially my videos and my writing, like as good as possible. And like, if you spend a lot of time with something, it's always worth to, you know, go the extra mile and uh, make it perfect rather than just leaving it at a 90% um, where you know that it could be 100%. And that's just my attitude to like, either do it like full or, um, and uh, with, you know, full, um, energy or you know not doing it, doing it at all yeah and i imagine your crew is there to kind of help you with that or are they saying come on that that was good enough let's move on sure i mean they they know me by now and uh, they know how i how my brain works a bit i would say which is which is definitely really helpful and um you know the crew i'm working together with them now for years and they were growing with me so um that's definitely cool but i definitely had a like quite some moments where they were saying yeah let's move on we 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 need to do other stuff and uh, the time is short mm-hmm. but and, and where i said no i want to try this so when i get it perfect otherwise we we're not gonna we're not gonna move on and yeah sure it can be quite hard but they always you know understand uh the way of how I'm thinking and they I think they also like really trust me in the process and also for myself it's super important to have those people around me where I know well if I'm telling them I'm gonna do I don't know 20 more tries on that or even 50 more tries they know why you know it's gonna worth it yeah. and uh why I want to do that so having those people around is uh yeah definitely super important for me yeah well, watching your videos, it's clear that you're incredibly confident on the bike. Where did you get that confidence and how do you continue to build on it and grow it? Uh, it's quite hard to say where, where I got the confidence, but I think it's probably just because I'm riding, you know, a lot of different disciplines and a lot of different styles. And I'm just like, I love, you know, mixing that together. And I think the the style of every single discipline um, requires, you know, different abilities on the bike. And uh, I think that really gives me a good overall feeling on the bike and uh, gives me um, the opportunity to, you know, maybe maybe like mix like stuff from other disciplines into into a certain discipline on, on biking and just like bringing a little bit of a mixture in there. And I think that definitely also gives me quite some confidence to um to try new things and um yeah just i just like to mix things up a bit and try out new things and you know i don't think i could you know write like all my life trials or i could all write all my life uh downhill and i think having this as a mixture you know big jumps with downhills but then also super techy things on the trials bike 
um, I think that gives me quite some confidence in general on a bike. Yeah. Well, and it sounds like too, you, you dedicate a ton of time to practice. I mean, especially in the early days of trying things over and over again, when you first try something, would you say that you're, you're cautious? Like, do you, do you kind of ease into things or are you the kind of person who looks at a big jump and just says, I'm going to go for it? That it really depends, but most of the time, you know, I'm, I've got something in my mind. I'm, I'm thinking so much about it that that I really know. Well, yeah, this could work or this is not going to work. And sometimes people are like, "Well, this is like super crazy," and do you not want to, you know, properly um, work on that jump yeah. to do it? Like for example, I did in Fabulous Escape Two uh, when I was uh, riding Salbach in in the winter. And doing that snow video, I was doing a double flip over over a snowboard kicker, and I hit that kicker, and like honestly, it felt pretty big. And uh, I just wanted to do that double flip for my video, and I had this in mind for quite some while. And I was like, yeah, like maybe this could work on a downhill bike, but to be honest, I wasn't sure if it's gonna work. Also, I did like one double flip on my trials bike before, which wasn't an airbag, and then I did one on on dirt on my trials bike but i've never ever tried one on my on my uh, downhill bike but uh yeah as i said sometimes it's just in my head where i'm thinking about the stuff and if i can imagine everything and everything goes well in my head then um it might work in in real life as well yeah and uh, there was also the case with that double flip i was just uh, thinking well if i'm gonna pull hard enough and uh the size of the jump fits in my opinion, perfectly. And then I was like, yeah, if I'm going full sand, I can, I can definitely do it. And I'm, I can definitely land it. And, um, that's how it works with a lot of stuff I'm doing. Yeah. I should probably prepare myself maybe a bit more on some things. <laughs> and that's also what I learned from the past because I'm usually, you know, I'm for sure. I'm thinking a lot about this stuff, but I'm not like properly preparing you know, sometimes for jumps and uh, or like for for tricks, because um, I'm just like thinking, well, if we're gonna film it, but I can, you know, I, I'm just gonna try it, and uh, if if I can, you know, um, imagine it in my head, then it should work. So that's sometimes how how my, how my brain works. Yeah, that's fascinating. And, you know, that's not the first time I've heard that from, you know, an elite level athlete, you know, not just in, in biking, but other sports as well, that, you know, this positive visualization is really powerful. But it for regular folks like me and a lot of riders, it's hard to imagine, right? It's hard to understand that. And few of us have have reached that level. So that's, that's really cool to, to hear and, and to really think about it. So, of all the videos that you've done, which video project are you the most proud of? Uh, it's really hard to tell because every single project got something very special. But if I would have to pick one, I would probably say my Wimmer Slow video, which I was filming in, in Austria on my fast bike. Mm -hmm. Just because it took like so much time and so much effort from everyone, not just from me, but also from the crew. And there was so much work going on behind and so much preparation that uh, uh, this was probably one of the coolest ones. And I also had a little injury where we had to stop, but then winter came and uh, like an overall, it took us, I think, all, over one and a half years to finish it. And um, the, and also like some of the tricks, they were like pretty, pretty cool and something I, I dreamed of doing, uh, you know, something like jumping, from a truck onto onto another truck and stuff, or from a bridge onto a truck, there was something I was imagining for such a long time, and um, that video, uh, yeah, was probably my favorite one to date. I would say. Yeah, yeah, and I mean that makes sense. That's the one you work the hardest on, and um, I believe it's your most popular video, right? The one with the most views so far. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that one's pretty crazy. Um, like it's it's online. I think for one and a half years, and it went uh, yeah, super. Like got uh, in some insane amount of clicks. That's that's cool. Yeah, yeah. 
That's amazing too, because it is, it's something that people outside of biking can watch and they can understand it and get excited about it. And it just is such a cool crossover to see that. So in addition to being an incredible urban trials rider, you're also very accomplished in both free ride and downhill mountain biking. So what are some of the skills that cross over between trials and mountain biking? Yeah, it's hard to tell which which are the skills that cross over, but for sure, you know, the bike feeling in general is super important for both of them. You know, but both of them are like super different. And that's why, you know, usually it's pretty funny to watch, but usually, usually trials riders are not, you know, proper properly able to jump like big jumps just because it's so different you know like handling the bike yeah. is a complete different way than handling like a downhill bike on big free ride jumps and um I, th- I think i was lucky enough to experience the big jumps on my motocross bike when i was uh, when i was a kid and therefore i've got you know that feeling somehow which i translated to biking and uh but then you know also when i was younger i started riding trials so both of those like different disciplines i was um learning when i was young and i was uh, i think i was super lucky with that just because yeah as i said they're super different and free riding takes so much like bike control as well and feeling in general of judging the speed right of judging you know your bike and and and, and getting a good feeling in the air where fast is really taking you know every single concentration which you like uh, and every single uh uh brain <laughs> yeah. thing which which you which you've got um for super techie stuff but that's quite different but then you know bringing that together can be also super you know funny like doing trial stuff on a downhill bike and mixing that together or you know on a, on an enduro bike where you do tricy stuff but then also big jumps they can be super fun but um it's um yeah it's definitely it can be quite hard to change from one thing like trials, which is uh, very unique to another thing like free ride and, uh, and do that thing. And also, you know, it's hard when you're not like focusing on one discipline to always, you know, be a hundred percent ready for it. Hmm. And, uh, you know, sometimes I'm riding my trials like for, I don't know, three or four weeks. And then I'm, um, doing something on my free ride bike and it just takes you know one or two days to you know get properly used to it again and to get into it yeah so that can be quite interesting yeah it, there's definitely that speed differential uh, that you kind of mentioned where trials is is much slower but you're also doing a lot of creative things on the bike and then you know with with downhill in particular it's all about speed and it's been amazing to watch how you kind of blend the two and you can take some of the creativity from trials and then bring it over to downhill and to free ride and speaking of which you've collected a few whip off titles over the years as well so what's sort of your secret for pulling off a really good whip yeah the secret i don't know if there is a secret to be honest i think it's more about you know having the bike feeling mm-hmm. in, inside you i mean and i always love doing whips like i can remember being a kid i was watching you know the the big guys uh, in motocross the big guys in mountain biking doing whips and that was the most stylish thing ever for me and uh like back in the days when i was riding motocross i was always trying to do whips and i can imagine my uh, i can remember my father um telling me not to do any whips just uh, because it's not it can it can be dangerous sometimes it's not and it's not gonna save you time and uh but i was always wanted to do like whips and, and try them over and over again and um it's just uh, one of the most fun things ever but you know what the secret is is really it's really difficult to tell i mean there are quite some different techniques of doing a whip like mine for example is not very clean and uh you know sometimes i don't bring it back but that's just like my style and i feel like a whip can be can be a bit rough and can be a bit um not so clean as well yeah um which yeah it gives like something a little bit of extra uh to whip for me um but uh there i mean there are quite some 
different opinions on that, but that's just like my style. And for that, pretty much, just, you know, trying to lay down as flat as possible and trying to lay down the bike also as flat as possible. And also it really depends on the jump, but uh, usually the more air time you have, the, the easier it is to get a good feeling for it. But in general, I would say it's all about trying it over and over again and trying, you know, to get slowly used to it and um, riding your bike as, as much as possible and jumping as much as possible. Yeah, that seems to be that seems to be the answer for everything. I mean, yeah, as much as we wish that we could instantly be good at something or, you know, be able to do what others can do. It's all about practice and, and trying things over and over. So you've traveled all over the world for your six series. What are some of the best trails and places that you've ridden? That's not a hard one, but I mean, I've traveled, yeah, as you say, I've traveled to quite some cool places um, already, which I'm very thankful for. And, you know, having the opportunity to travel, you know, to so many different places just because biking is, is, is great. And, um, I definitely, I definitely visited a couple of places where there were some good trails, but usually when I'm going somewhere, most of the time, I'm honestly, I, I'm riding street somewhere <laughs> most of the time. And, uh, therefore I definitely know like some really good cities, but when it comes to trails, um, I mean, for sure, Whistler is pretty cool. Um, which, which I really like to, to ride like top of the world is, is definitely really cool to feel to me and, and, and a lot of fun. But then also, I mean, I love riding Saarbach. Uh, that's also where I'm riding a lot of trails. But other than that, to be honest, I didn't really ride much trails. Um, I just uh, ride a lot of, uh, you know, big jumps and, and, and street stuff. Yeah. Where's the best street riding? Is it all in Europe? I mean, it seems like, you know, obviously you're based there um, and a lot of the top riders are. And so we see a lot of videos uh, that are filmed on the streets in Europe. Are there other places around the world you visited that have good street riding? And what makes good street riding too, by the way? Yeah, I mean, it, it's really different like from, from city to city what makes street riding good. You know, some cities, they've got quite some good curves and stuff like that or like cool walls. And so, sometimes it doesn't take much that there is that, that it's a good street spot. You know, sometimes a wall in the perfect size with another wall in combination can be the perfect street spot for trial riders. But uh, I mean, for sure, you know, cities like Barcelona are definitely one of the coolest places I've ever been just because it's, you know, such a good city with so many walls and and uh, curves and everything, which is, which is really cool. But then I also um, Cape Town was pretty cool. It was another, another cool city. Um, also San Francisco, I was there a couple of times in the riding street. Also with Martin Soderstrom, we had one of the, one of the, one of the coolest days there, riding street. And, um, yeah, there, there are definitely a lot of, a lot of different, uh, places where street riding is really good. And, you know, sometimes it doesn't take too much to, um, to have a good spot or to, to have fun on your bike. Yeah. Well, clearly your huge following gives you a position of influence among young riders in particular. Do you have anything you want to say to the kids who look up to you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, for kids, I think it, it, it's good to have, it's amazing to have role models and to, you know, trying to do the things like the, the pro riders are doing or maybe even what I'm doing. And, uh, and that's also like really cool to see. And one of the, I think one of the most important things which I could probably tell someone uh, who wants to, I don't know, become a, a good rider or who wants to even become a pro rider is that it's what well, it's super important to, you know, to have fun on your bike. It sounds very cheesy and classy, but uh, like if you, if you really want to, you know, become a pro and if you really dedicate yourself to that, then you can, you know, definitely do it. And if it's fun to you and then, Definitely you can make it, but uh, just not be too, you know, too much focused on, on getting sponsors or, um, or, uh, or on anything else. I think it's uh, all about having fun. And then like, if you're having fun and if you're doing great things and if you enjoy it, 
then the good things will come and you know sponsors will come and you will you might be able to you know make even a living out of that and uh live from what 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 you love but i think the most important thing is that you don't lose the you know the the main motivation which is biking and which is the fun that biking brings to you and um if you always keep that in mind then uh then yeah it's that's definitely the right way to go yeah yeah do you give that advice to your younger brother gabriel is that how did he get into it and and did you encourage him to do that or were you just saying no just just kind of do this for fun yeah i mean for sure i mean it's pretty funny he actually started riding trials like before i did um so there was yeah that was pretty funny and then you know we were riding a lot together when we were younger and doing that stuff and then i mean i moved to innsbruck and he's still at home and uh we we're not in contact that much and we can't unfortunately ride uh not that much together but um i mean for sure that's an advice for him and he he enjoys biking and he enjoys you know being on the bike having fun on the bike and uh i think you can like people can also like clearly see that and um you know he just i think he just enjoys doing that stuff um as much as i do and making videos uh which is which is cool and you know he's working together with uh with another cousin of mine a cousin of him um who's do, who's filming stuff with him so they're having like tons of fun as well and um that's really cool to see how he developed himself as well and um the the path he's going um so he definitely um yeah, it's definitely on a cool path and, uh, yeah, it's definitely having a lot of fun, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed his latest video. There were a couple of Wibmers, uh, who had film credits, uh, camera people. So that's, yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah. So looking beyond your recovery, what types of projects are you working on for 2021? Yeah. So, uh, as I, yeah, as I said before, this uh, injury has definitely messed up some of my plans. I was um, working on a project, uh, which I unfortunately had to cancel because of that foot. I actually just wanted to um, to start a project two days after, pretty much two days after I got injured. So that really sucked. Oh, man. Yeah, but um, yeah, we might going to do it somewhat later. But the thing is, like, I'm really trying to get, you know fit again and get healthy again and um yeah trying to recover uh, in the best way possible and then i see i think i'm just gonna start slowly and uh, i'm not sure how 2021 is gonna be and how my food is gonna work but um i've definitely got like a couple of projects in my mind which i which i really want to do but i've got you know no time pressure um to do them so i just want to make sure to get back on my bike and uh, get back in shape as good as possible and um then i'm gonna see what 2021 brings but for sure i wanna i wanna do something uh it might be something maybe a little bit more chilled um without uh too much danger i can imagine but uh yeah <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll see I'm, I'm not decided yet so yeah well, it seems like too, it's tar it's hard to plan, especially if some of the projects involve travel, you know, whether that's going to be possible next year or not. I mean, are you planning to sort of stick close to home for the first part of the year at least, or were you looking toward like competing in events or, or going on tour or anything like that? Yeah, that's a, that's a problem that's super hard to, you know, get a feeling for was what's gonna happen and how's how's 2021 gonna be especially with the situation uh going on right now it's so hard to make any kind of plan so honestly i don't you know set any plans i'm just uh you know focusing 100 on getting back on my bike and then i'm gonna decide more um yeah what i'm gonna do but for now i don't really plan too much and uh, it's just not really possible to make too many plans at the moment and i think also not necessary for me in that situation so yeah i'm gonna keep it quite chill with that at the moment yeah if you weren't a trials rider and a red bull athlete what do you think you would be doing instead yeah that's a that's a very interesting question because uh i mean i always 
kind of like knew I wanted to be an athlete. But I mean, when I was a kid, I, you know, I was riding motocross. I was doing quite a lot of different things, also parkour and stuff like that. And I was always, you know, sport was kind of like my life. And I, uh, yeah, I think I dreamed of somehow being, you know, an athlete one day. But um, you know, you can you can never um, take that for granted. So um, I think I might be, you know, be somewhere in the sports industry, and you know, maybe even like in biking, just because I love the sport in general, and I like the like the people uh, and just like the style and everything. So I might be even, you know, doing something like managing someone or or being in the management uh, position somewhere and uh yeah i could imagine that but to be honest i i don't really know what i what i would do without uh if i wouldn't have be, been an, an athlete good answer i mean clearly you're very passionate about biking and about what you do and you, you know clearly you found your niche and you're where you're supposed to be and that's awesome well, thanks so much, Fabio, for joining us. I really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, thank you. That was cool. So you can keep up with Fabio anywhere online, really, uh, but mostly his YouTube channel, Instagram, uh, and his websites as well, which we will have linked in the show notes. That's all we've got this week. We'll talk to you again next week. Mm-hmm.